Hi, this is Dennis Surgeon with an update for you on how we understand a theory of knowledge. And the subtitle of this program is How We Know What We Know. Today, I'd like our dialogue to be about how we really know anything. And knowledge comes from testing a theory and then seeing the evidence for ourselves in that test. Today, we're going to have a look at how managers, leaders, and everyone in an organization can use knowledge. We'll review it in the broader context in the system of profound knowledge. And we'll define this as an opportunity for us all to act with knowledge instead of with our biases and assumptions. It's part of our managing, leading, and transforming our workplaces. And I'd like you to share your thinking with others in dialogue. So what is not knowledge is a useful place to start. Data is not knowledge. Information is not it. Dr. W. Edwards Deming said once that information is not knowledge. A book, a paper, a slide deck, a video, or a presentation by itself is not knowledge. So what is it? It's having a theory and asking what's the evidence of that theory in a test. We use the plan, do, study, act cycle or the plan, do, check, act cycle to look for that evidence. And then we see the evidence for ourselves. This is called the philosophy of pragmatism. This definition of knowledge is based in considering the words and thoughts and theories as tools and instruments for prediction, problem solving and action. There are two Latin phrases used to differentiate the types of knowledge justification or argument by reliance on experience or evidence. In a priori knowledge, this relates to or denotes reasoning that proceeds from a theory, but not from observation or experience. A posteriori knowledge is that which depends on observation of evidence, including the science, as well as personal knowledge that it works. C.I. Lewis had a definition of knowledge that helped inform Deming's definition as well as Walter Schuhart, one of his influences. And a quote from C.I. Lewis that's depicted here emphasizes that knowledge begins and ends in experience, keeping in mind that the beginning and ending experiences differ. Knowledge of something requires that we actually experience the verification and for the pragmatist, verifiability is an operational definition or a test of the empirical meaning of that statement. It requires that we know how to apply the statement and when not to apply it, and we're able to trace the consequences of the statement in situations both theoretical and real. This gets to cause and effect. W. Edwards Deming defined knowledge as a statement which predicts a future outcome built on theory, which can be proven by observation and measurements with the risk of being wrong. He's also gone on to teach us that experience without theory teaches nothing. A theory of knowledge in a statement conveys knowledge if it fits without past observations of failures. It predicts future outcomes and has a risk or responsibility of being wrong. This is, again, informed by the work of C.I. Lewis, as well as somebody that came before him, John Dewey. Deming described this operational definition before. It's part of his system of profound knowledge. And this looking glass is an opportunity to consider that how we evaluate the aim of any test is used through this lens that's made up of multiple parts. We can also use things like a radar chart to develop our learning about anything. We can look at this scale that we use to evaluate whether we have any information or data about a particular topic. And the progression is from not knowing anything about it to maybe hearing about it and ultimately knowing how to use it to learn more. Deming's definition that is very much a cause and effect I repeat the statement again, is that without theory, there's no learning and without learning, there is not knowledge. This progression or cycle of causes in effect is that the theory begets the learning and the learning begets knowledge. 
The PDCA or PDSA cycle of learning and improvement provides the method by which we can convert our theories into knowledge, and the learning from those cycles provides the evidence we need. Russell Acoff also had a related definition, and he started with a quote, learning begins with questions we cannot answer and ends with questions we can. Aside from his progression of data being converted to information, being converted to knowledge, and at that analysis stage, we convert data to information and information to knowledge. This analysis focuses on structure and how things work. But we take it a level further by synthesizing what we know about different areas of knowledge to develop understanding and ultimately wisdom. The synthesis focuses on functions and why things work, not just how. The model for improvement is also a contributor to our understanding with respect to PDSA and PDCA cycles. You've seen this diagram before, and if you haven't, I urge you to go back and look at our YouTube video on the PDSA cycle. So I've got a question for you to pursue in an exercise. Find somebody that you trust and that you can communicate well with and have a discussion about this particular question, what do I know? Now you might know several things by presumption, but I want you to have a dialogue with them and test them with this same question. What is it that you presume you know? And then after you make that short list, talk with your colleague about how you can test it. How do you develop the evidence of what you know? Have a discussion about that and then come back to this slide deck. This decision time is where we decide to either adopt the change, abandon it, adapt it in some way, and then we begin the next cycle. And I'd like to remind you about Deming's quote, without theory, there is no learning and without learning, there is not knowledge. So the second exercise I'd like you to think about with your colleague is ask yourself this second question. What do we know? What do we know about our process and how do we know it? These are two useful questions that you and a colleague can partner up on and further develop your understanding. Again, I mentioned Deming's system of profound knowledge and I won't go through all of these aspects of the system of profound knowledge, but you also have access to a PDF that evaluates the progression of how this system of knowledge has been developed over more than a century. I urge you to think about this as we move into the knowledge age. A map of this profound knowledge system is available as a separate PDF, and I'll encourage you to take a look at that and come back to each of these sources and study it further. With that, I'd like to make sure that in the PDF of the presentation or the slide deck, you have an opportunity to look at these different resources and explore on your own the foundations of this, how do we know what we know? I'd like to thank you for your kind attention. This is Dennis Surgeon, and I would be delighted if you'd give me a call or send me an email at the address below. I'd be happy to learn from you. As I mentioned before in the presentation, the possibility is out there that this could be wrong, but so far in my test of these theories, I've discovered that they are not yet wrong. Thank you very much and have a great day.